This is not really relevant to the video actually, but this is a slow loris. I just thought I'd show it because it was cute. That's all. <laughs> Don't keep them as pets though. Now, um, the slow loris is, I guess, my favourite denial of service attack. Now that says a lot about me, doesn't it, that I have a, a favourite <laughs> denial of service attack. Before I demonstrate anything, of course, let's get it straight out in the open. You shouldn't be using slow losses on anyone or any other denial of service attack on anyone else, right? Because you'll get in a lot of trouble. Most denial of service is the idea that you try and defeat some web server or some computer on the other side of the web by giving it as much bandwidth as you can such that it breaks, right? They have a certain amount of bandwidth they're allowed to use. And if you give them more than that or try and request too many web pages, their server goes down. That's a general idea of denial of service. Distributed denial of service is just the next level where you have multiple computers all attempting to do the same thing. And then more modern denial of service will use amplification and things like this to try and improve this even more. But the whole point is as much bandwidth as you can all at the same time, right? And if you get enough, you can take them down. If you don't, then they just laugh, right? So, you know, Microsoft and Google, it's, you're, gonna have, you're gonna have difficulty bringing them down. But smaller websites, it can have a massive impact on the amount of money they're making if no one can visit their shop or something like that. So it's a real problem. What I like about the slow loris is it comes at it from a completely different way. It's a protocol attack, so a layer seven application attack, which doesn't need a lot of bandwidth, so I can do a slow loris on someone and then just browse the web as normal, play computer games. So let's think back to how me talking to a web server works. I send off a get request to a website and I say get me index.html. Then the web server sends back index.html and that's the end of that conversation, right? Then I start up another conversation that says, I've read this index.html, I now need you know, header.jpg. So I send off another GET request and so on. And we have these short conversations back and forth. Now, usually an HTTP request is just text, right? So it literally says HTTP GET 1.1 or something, index.html, where I'm sending it, a bit about me, so I'm using you know, Firefox or something, um, and then some other data. And it always ends with two carriage return line feeds, so two new lines. Right. So normally in text we have a carriage return character and then a line feed character. Two of those signals the end of an HTTP request. What the inventor of the slow loris, uh, some hacker named Rsnake, I think, decided was, what if I never send those carriage return line feeds? Can I just keep the website waiting for me? Can I go so slowly by asking for websites so slowly that I just break them? Right. And yeah, you can. Um, and, and so they have things like timeouts and stuff. So maybe let's say I'm in the middle of browsing a website and then on my phone, right? And just as I'm in the middle of sending off a request, I lose phone signal, right? That's pretty common in, you know, these days. So that would time out on the server's end as well. And they would let the connection go and then they could serve someone else the website. The problem comes if I don't send no data, I send some data, but just painfully slowly. What's great about the slow loris is there's hardly any code. It, it talks to a web server and it basically says, get me index.html or something like that, and then sends a space or a zero or a random number or something like that. And then it waits for about you know, 10, 20, 30 seconds, just when the website's about to assume it's gone and sends another single byte and says, I'm still here, I'm just really slow. And then it does this again, and it does this again, and keeps that connection going as long as it can. And then it does it with 200 other connections, or as many connections as it can. So my computer sending out this attack is sending 200 byte packets every minute or so. It's not a lot at all. And it's very difficult for a firewall or something to notice this, because these are valid HTTP requests. They're just super slow, right? And, um, you know, maybe I've just got a really bad internet connection, maybe. Yeah. Um, now, this doesn't affect every web server. It mostly affects Apache because of the way Apache works. Unfortunately, Apache is very prevalent. There's about 40-50% uh, Apache these days. It's hard to know for sure, but I had a quick check and that seems to be about the rough estimate. They go up and down. Apache, when they designed it, they decided it would be a good idea to start up a new thread to, to serve every concurrent connection. So when a connection comes in with an HTTP request, they set up a new thread that handles that request and then the thread goes away when it's finished. Now, that wasn't entirely stupid. You know, if the, if the connections appear and then they go away, that's not a problem. But if the connections start to stay open longer than we anticipate, then our connection limit gets reached. So Apache will have a connection limit of let's say 200 co concurrent connections, because beyond that, you've just got so many threads, the whole thing starts to grind to a halt. So 
What Slow Loris does is begin to open connections. And as a new one gets freed up from someone else using the website, they'll open that one and they'll open this one and they'll open this one until they've got all the connections. So let's see how it works, right? So I, I've come up with another of my glorious websites just for this, <laughs> Mike's website. So that's actually this computer here, which is running Windows and Apache. Now, so this is my website with my company profile in Lauren Ipsum. What this website is, not very important. Let's have a quick look at the code. This is not the original implementation of Slow Loris. This is a Python implementation I found, but essentially it's not very long, right? 67 lines, which is another reason I like it because it's so elegant. Really what it does, is it has some code here to start up a socket, which is a, a, a TCP connection um, and make a get request. Here's our get request text. And then for all existing sockets down here, can we send a little bit more data every 15 seconds. And if a socket dies, we recreate it and we just keep that going. And it will do this for 200 concurrent sockets, which is more than my Apache installation is configured to handle. So let's run this then. There we are, Python slow loris to the IP address that we just looked at. Right, it's created all the sockets and now it's just going to sit there every now and again sending a byte of data to this Apache web server. So the web server thinks that it's got 200 people looking at the website when in fact it's got one person looking at the website really, really slowly 200 times. If I press refresh on this, because it's been cached, we can see we're now waiting. Waiting. So if you cleared the cache now on your browser, would that then not be able to get the website? No, I wouldn't be able to see the website. So let's go to the website now that we're under slow Lois. So, right, we're waiting for it. I mean, we might get lucky. Maybe one of these sockets drops out and then the server can respond, right? But we might not. But you click to go back to that same website, yep. and of course it can't load it in, so we're just seeing five. Yeah, at some point we might see a timeout on this client side saying, no, I didn't get any response from the server. This server has basically, well, won't serve this website to me because it's too busy serving 200 other websites. Or more specifically, busy waiting for us to finish the request 200 times so it can actually finally get on with something. And how long would that carry on sending those requests? As long as I want. Uh, as long as I want. And as soon as the socket dies, another one comes up and just keeps going. I mean, 67 lines of code, right? And, and here's a nice bit, fun things to do. I can just use the net as normal. My net is fine, right? I'm not using all my bandwidth to do this. I'm using barely any of my bandwidth, um, which is what I really like about it. This kind of attack is called a low and slow attack. So there's a couple of others. Rudy, uh, Are You Dead Yet? is another one that does similar things. Um, and what's clever about them is they're quite hard to detect because what it's doing is totally normal HTTP. It's just doing it incredibly slowly. And when they, when they designed this and when they designed Apache, no one ever thought you'd do something like that. And that's exactly the problem with these sort of protocol attacks. The assumption that they'll always do what you expect them to do and they won't do these random strange side things. So yeah, my favorite denial of service. If you rename a document, you don't change the document. So if I rename the file notempty.txt to be still not empty.txt. But the key thing is that every time you create an atom for the same string, either the same sequence of characters, you get the same atom back.